I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endure to all generations. Give an honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our life. In him we live, we move, we have our being. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life, declaring that no one comes to the Father but by him. We want to thank you for tuning in to another broadcast of the Word Ministries, hosted by yours truly. I am Pastor Billy Bedford. We give honor to whom honor is due. We give honor to all of you. Amen that are tuned in to another broadcast of the Word Ministry. We want to thank you for your continual, amen, viewing of this broadcast, and we pray that you are being encouraged and uplifted and inspired, amen, from the Word of God, amen. Not from, amen, me, but from the Word of God, amen, in the Word. Amen. There is a hiding place, and we thank God for his word. His word that has gone out of his mouth, it will not return unto him void. It will accomplish what it pleased, and it will prosper where it is sent. Amen. The word of God is very important to us. We need the word of God. We need to meditate upon it day and night. We should study the word of God. Amen. To show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible says, and I believe it, amen, that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And that, amen, the scriptures are profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions, thoroughly furnished, amen, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, amen. I believe, amen, the writers, as they were writing, amen, that they were moved by the Holy Ghost, amen. And when the Holy Ghost moves on you, Amen. It's not your will. Amen. But it is the will of God. Amen. God desire, amen, to move on us, to use us. Amen. We talked last week's sermon was, amen, cover you is what the Lord want to do. From Adam even unto now, it is the will of God desire to cover you. There's so much going on in this world. Amen. Destruction is in the land. Amen. People, amen, are, are doing things that we never thought would happen. Amen. Praise the name of God. We're living in a day and time when just recently, amen, uh, a father killed his six-year-old son. Amen. Praise the name of God. Uh, cover you is what the Lord want to do. Just recently, a six-year-old child took a gun and shot a teacher. Amen. It is important to allow God to cover you. Cover your children. Cover your families. And that's what he wants to do. And if you are not covered by him, I want to tell you that it's not that he don't want you covered. It's not that you're too far from him. The Bible says his hand is not shortened that he cannot save. His ears are not heavy that he cannot hear. 
The problem is not in, in God. It is in us. Somebody once said, if God seems far from you, guess who moved? He's still there. Waiting on us. Standing at the door. Knock and said, if anyone will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. You mean me, even you. Jesus said, he that comes to me, I will in no wise, no case, Cast him out. God wants to cover you. And that which is in his hand, Jesus declared, no one will be able to pluck him out. They can lie on you, scandalize your name, but they can't pluck you out of the hand of God. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Killed all the day long, accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Cover you is what the Lord want to do. We want to be under his covering. Therefore, we should pray. The Bible says man always ought to pray and not faint. We ought to pray without ceasing. Amen. Pray to the one that's covering us. With prayer, with supplication, make your requests known unto God. Go to the one that's covering you and ask. Ask for covering. Ask. Your covering said it shall be given. Seek your covering. Seek and you shall find. And the door shall be open unto you. If there's a door of healing, know that you're covered and that he's your healer. If you need a way made, he's your provider. You're under the covering of one that will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You're under the covering of a one that can open the window of heaven, pour you out blessing that there is not room enough to receive. Thank God covering you. You got something to praise him for. Many things that you got him to praise him for. But one thing, you ought to praise him for covering you. But had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up. Thank God for being a covering for you and I. Let us go to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sin and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything uh, to God in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for being able to come to you. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Lord, for your shedded blood. For without your shedded blood, there is no remission of sins. Thank you, Lord, for these, your people.
Someone need healing in their body. But Lord God, you've already healed all manner of sickness and disease. You are a healer. Hallelujah. Somebody going through a storm right now. But you've already gotten out of the hinder part of a ship and said, peace be still. Good God Almighty, have your way today. Bless Lord. Touch these, your people, from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. We stand before you asking you forgive us of all our sin, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We come to you to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. We confess that our righteousness are as the rag, as filthy rags. But Lord, when we come to you, we become your righteousness of you. And we thank you for forgiveness of sins. We thank you for cleansing. We thank you for healing. We thank you for salvation through your precious blood. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. To the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2 beginning at verse number 42. To the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse number 42, you will find these words recorded. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. <coughs> and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, our father and I have sought thee sorry. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. And they understood not the saying of which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in his heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. We want to talk to you from this subject. Make it your business to stay in business of the Father. 
Make it your business to stay in the Father's business. Praise the name of God. We're living in uh, what many call hard economic times. And on the natural side of life, businesses are going out of business. Businesses are shutting down. But I stopped by WOIL TV 47 located in the marble city of Sylacauga, Alabama to tell somebody that we all should make it our business to stay in the Father's business. Praise the name of God. God want us to be about our Father's business. And in order to be about our Father's business, we've got to do what it takes to be about our Father's business. Tell us, Brother Pastor, what are some of the things that are about our Father's business? Well, Jesus Christ is our supreme example of being about the Father's business. At 12 years old, he already was about his father's business. So, amen, uh, even you, young man, you're not too young to be about the father's business. Ecclesiastes 12 says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. Jesus Christ was about the Father's business. When he came into this world, he came with a purpose. See, to be about your Father's business, you got to come with a purpose. Jesus' purpose was, hallelujah, Christ Jesus came into this world. His business was to save sinners. The angel declared to Joseph that she shall bring forth a son. Gonna call his name Jesus. And he gonna save his people from their sin. The Gospel of Luke says that the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. The Father's business is to see souls saved. If you're looking for, amen, something to do about the Father's business, you ought to look, amen, amen, to see that others, amen, know Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. If God has <coughs> brought you out, if God has delivered you from the hand of the enemy, it ought to be your business to tell somebody Amen about the Lord. Tell them that he saved to the utmost. Tell them, amen, that Jesus, amen, is alive. And that he is in the saving business. It is our business to go out and tell somebody about Jesus Christ. I heard him say, the harvest is plenteous. 
but the laborers are few. We ought to be telling others about Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm an Alabama Crimson Tide fan. And I tell others, amen, road tide. But that's not the total father's business that I should be about. Amen. I should tell people, amen, that Jesus is number one. Jesus is numero uno. And he wants to be number one in our lives. Good God Almighty. In other words, when I wake up in the morning, I ought to not wake up just saying roll time. I ought to wake up saying that this is the day that the Lord has made and that I will rejoice and be glad therein. I ought to not be blessing, amen, Nick Saban. Amen. But I ought to be like David and bless the Lord at all times. His praise, his praise shall continually be right here in my mouth. Why? Because, amen, he is our number one business. He doesn't take life from us. He doesn't take a man doing things from us. He just wants to be number one in our lives. And that's to be our father's business. When we are about our father's business, we don't have to worry about what we're going to drink, what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear. Because the father knows you have need of these things. But when you're about your father's business, you seek, Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first. Amen. Seek ye first. He comes before you. Anyone will be his disciple. Let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first God's way of doing things. And all of these things shall be added unto you. Make it your business to stay in business. Amen. And to stay in business is to be about your father's business. His number one concern is souls. And that soul to have eternal life. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have. Not he didn't say a car, a house, or land but have everlasting life. And within everlasting life, cars, houses, and land are a given. But everlasting life, amen. And when you have everlasting life abiding in you, it should be your business to stay in business. 
and be about your father's business. And that's number one, is souls. Your soul is very important to God. Souls of mankind is very important to God. Jesus Christ, when he was 12 years old, was in Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And he tarried behind mother, his mother Mary and Joseph. And he was stayed there for the doctors and lawyers asking questions and answering questions. Twelve years old. Mary and Joseph did not know that he was not in their company. And they went to their acquaintance and kinsfolk. And after three days, they found him in the temple and asked him, how, why have you dealt with us like this? Your father and I have been looking for you, sorrowing. Jesus said, wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. He made it his business to stay in business. And he was about his father's business. He grew in stature, knowledge, having favor with God and man. He is our supreme example of how to be about our father's business. I say again to you, Make it your business to stay in business. May God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer.